Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. First of all, happy Friday night and welcome to Music Forward's Open Mic Friday. My name is Lydia Caesar, and I will be your hostess with the mostest this evening. Listen, it is Friday night. Everything is back open. You could be anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with us tonight. And we are so excited about that. You will not regret it. I promise you. I am so excited to bring you the freshest new talent from around the globe. That's what's so special about Music Forward. You never know where the artists are from. And it's always a nice wide array of amazing, fresh new talent for you. So I want to thank you for joining us right here on Twitch. We are here every other week. So make sure that you lock us in, subscribe to Music Forward right on this platform so that you never miss out because In addition to Open Mic Fridays, we have so many other amazing events that take place right here on this platform. So do me a favor and subscribe right now. I'm going to give you like half a second. Okay, hopefully you hit that subscribe button. Also, what I want you to do right now is share this link. So I'm guessing somebody invited you out to see them perform. Whatever link they send to you, text it to somebody else. We want to fill this room up so that our artists can get the most eyes on their amazing performances. All right. So before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about Music Forward and Open Mic Fridays. Like I said, somebody probably just invited you and you might not know what this is. Like, what am I even getting myself into tonight? Let me explain. First of all, what is Music Forward? It is an amazing organization that connects young people from our communities directly to the music industry via career and artist development programming, designed to transform young lives, inspire careers, and champion a more inclusive industry. Listen, I'm an artist as well, myself, a singer-songwriter, so I understand how hard it is to break into the industry, right? It's a tough nut to crack. So this is the artist. This is the industry. There's a gap. Music Forward is basically that bridge that helps the artists find their way easier into this challenging industry. What is Open Mic Fridays? Open Mic Fridays is a performance showcase where young artists, they basically share their talent, they gain exposure. And what makes us so unique is that our artists are going to get live feedback directly from experts in the industry who have had successful careers. We've all been there. We're trying to do something and somebody who has never done it before is trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. It's like, do you even really know, right? It can be frustrating. This is not that. These experts have been there, done that, and they're going to pour directly in to these artists following their performance. So that's what makes this open mic so special. All right. So we're going to focus back on tonight. And the lineup. First, we're going to need a little bit of help from you guys, the audience, okay? We really need you to participate. From tonight's lineup, we're going to be inviting back two special performers. For the, We have a showcase, a finals showcase in August of all the best of this uh, of summer season, right? So one of the artists that's going to be coming back is the one with the most fans in the audience. So that's where you come into play. So I will prompt you to head over to our Instagram at Music Forward and show them love in our poll at the end of each performance. The second artist will be chosen by our industry experts, all right? Listen. We have also partnered with Sennheiser to provide professional equipment to our artists. So the two artists selected tonight will both receive the MK4 true condenser microphone like the one that I'm using tonight. How does it sound? Sounds great, doesn't it? So they will both be getting this mic and um, the artists selected for the end of the season showcases will also receive a pair of headphones. So it really pays to be a part of this amazing show. Before we get started with the performances, let's meet our industry experts. Are y'all ready to meet these experts? Because let me tell you something, they are special. They're special every week, but especially tonight. Industry guests, please turn on your cameras. As they're coming in, I'm going to read their bios and tell you a little bit about them. First, we have Diana Baez, Associate Director at RCA Records. Diana is a music business professional with 15 plus years of experience specializing in music curation and licensing. 
Her career has touched music licensing from different corners of the business, film studio, boutique licensing agency, publishing, and now record label. The common thread among these corners of the industry is her love of music, the artistry, and helping create cultural moments via placements by marrying music to picture. Diana has worked with Grammy and Latin Grammy artists, has overseen pitching of global music from one of their premier world music labels in the United States, and has worked alongside taste-making artists aspiring for that sync moment. For everyone out there that doesn't know, syncing is when you sync music to movies or commercials, films, stuff like that, TV shows. Her respect for the craft the inspiration that music gives her, and the opportunity to have had a hand in the process of landing a music placement that will live on is why she loves music licensing. Amazing. Diana is also a proud two-time UCA, uh, USC alumna. Diana, we are so excited to have you. Lydia, thank you so much. Man, love like a really great bio uh, announcement. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> super excited to be here today. Super excited to be here today. And just let me just say, I love the work. I love the work that Music Forward is doing. And it'll be such uh, so much fun to be able to listen to these artists tonight. So thank you all for having me. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question to start you out with. Sure. What are best practices to help someone in your position find and place artists music well i think the question first starts with at what level the artist is you know currently in their career so for an artist that's just starting out i would probably say teaming up with the licensing companies so a company that only specializes in working with artists and connecting their music for exactly as you said film tv and advertising Mm -hmm. um being in los angeles specifically myself there are like so many companies in new york as well yeah um but i think that's the best the best first step and being able to work with those connectors uh between um those of us who are working with music and artists and those who are uh, music supervisors those who are deciding um, what's going to be placed yeah exactly yeah for sure Love it. Oh, this is going to be so exciting. Okay, stick around. We're going to bring in our next industry guest. Next up, we have Hisham Dahoud. Hisham, come on in. Hisham. Okay, yes. Let me tell the people about you. <laughs> Hisham Dahoud is a Los Angeles-based music professional spreading his talents across the industry as a celebrated music marketer, lifelong musician, and artist educator for over 15 years, you guys. He spends his time between marketing strategies for his own roster of artists, DJ producers, and music tech companies while simultaneously working on his own musical project as an artist, composer, and live performer under the alias Rizik which has amassed over 12 million streams with listeners in over 100 countries. That's amazing. Combining his experience both as an active artist and seasoned music marketer, Hisham teaches the next generation of music creators through his brand Artist Pro, which focuses on career planning, personal development, and brand building for early stage music artists. Hisham, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Good to be here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to see the music. I know, right? So excited to have you. I love that you are like an exec and also an artist. You know, like I have I wear t- those same similar hats too. So I love meeting other people who, who do both. Wh- my question for you is going to be about a little bit about that. How do you find that balance between your, you know, your business and your artistry. It's a combination of uh, planning as much as possible in advance. It's a combination of uh, yeah. just, just autopilot. I mean, another yeah. experience, I guess is another word experience. Uh, it's a combination of planning ahead, uh, 
tracking your time, at least for me, I'm kind of a nerd about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, protect, protecting your time uh, in, in all kind of facets, whether it's protecting your time from needy clients or uh, protecting your, <laughs> your, your mental space and energy to ensure that you have enough of a boundary to keep yourself in a creatively inspired space to make good music. Um, it's, it's, I cannot not do both, man. I've tried, I've tried just doing music and there's a part of me that goes, mm. I've tried just focusing on music business and right. the bigger part of me goes, I don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> the biggest part. <laughs> yeah. And I think many artists also struggle with the idea, the idea of identity. Like this is who I am. This is what yeah. I do. Uh, mm-hmm. And I've learned to separate what I do from my identity and just do the things I like to do and see what happens. So that's Love it. Love that. Love it. And I think a lot of artists can learn from that and especially newer artists, because I do feel like over time we do evolve. And so you may, you know, all of these artists may find themselves in in the position just like you doing both. So we're excited for your expertise and what you guys are both going to share with our artists. All right. So we're about to get into these artists and bring them out. So right now we're going to say bye, but we'll see you in a second. So you two may both now turn off your cameras. Yes. All right, you guys. So was I lying? We got some heavy hitters in the building tonight to pour into these artists and we have a phenomenal lineup. So let us get started. Well, last thing I want to remind you is that the chat is open right here on Twitch. Okay. Keep it positive. You never know how far an encouraging word may go. This is a tough career choice that these artists are on. This is a tough journey. Some of these days you wonder why, why am I still here? You never know. Your comment may be what keeps them in the game. So share some fun, encouraging words during their performance tonight. All right. First, coming to the virtual stage, we have our first performer. The crowd goes wild. I know y'all are going wild out there. That's why. That's why I know. We have Devo. Devo, come on in. I'm going to tell the audience a little bit about you. From the west side of Chicago, Devo makes it a mission to bring themes of fun, pain, pleasure, history, spirituality, and religion all through his music. Through experimental and traditional rap, He creates works from imagination, stories he's been told, and personal stories to bring the human experience to life. Devo, we're so excited to have you kicking. You you are kicking off the open mic. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm excited to be here. Like, uh, I'm very much a fan of Music Forward and everything they've done. Yeah. From like the past, like bringing down a house and just everything they do for young creatives. Uh, definitely everyone who wants to get into the music industry. It's just, it's amazing. Just ha- yeah. Happy to be here. We're excited to have you. Tell us about the song you're going to be singing tonight. Nah, yeah, this song, uh, I really like this song because it's the first song I came back after I had heavy writer's block. I was really doubting myself a lot. There mm-hmm. wasn't really a lot of confidence that I had after just a, whole string of things that happened yeah i was kind of looking at my music just self like doubting myself a lot but when i finally wrote this yeah when i finally wrote this it was just it started going it started clicking again nice awesome well listen enough said let's let the music do the talking without further ado ladies and gentlemen devo take it away Uh, uh, uh yeah I've been on top and ain't nobody stopping me. Oh, uh, you try your best, but you can't get the drop on me. Oh, uh, my, I feel like a million. I might go on the shop spree. Oh, uh, and if you ain't talking about how to get money, don't. Oh, uh, I've been on a new wave. Can't hang with nobody. Back of my happy place, RBG staying on top. Yeah, that's who's saying money. Computer area, you know that we stand on track till I'm in number one. Body and track till they stand on one. Doing this till it's all the fun. Doing it all so I stand in like 2018. Oh, I'm back in the bed. You know that kid let up. My mic is seven. Speaking that louder and louder like that. The only way I get my head is to listen. Very rapper for his repetition. They wonder why it's a lack of competitors. And they charge me like I fit the description. I don't respond to this distance. You mention me because you acknowledge that you want to go. I got a wife as a missus who likes to complain about girls. Whoa. Yeah, I've been gone for a minute. I had to walk off to a higher self. I didn't know. Now I'm about to jump in the game as a rising star. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Woo. I've been on top and ain't nobody stopping me. Woo. You try your best till you give me a drop on me. Oh. I 
feel like a million might go on a shopping spree. Uh, and if you ain't talking about how to get money, don't talk to me. I've been on top and ain't nobody stopping me. You try your best, but you can't get the drop of me. Uh, I feel like a million might go on a shopping spree. Let's go, let's go. If you ain't talking about how to get on practice, I gotta be better. I'm putting up shots in that jumper. Got wetter. I'm taking my time. You be rushing the price. Your team feel like a bunch of people with the fuck. I took a few L's just to pass it with W's. Look at the moves. Like I think I'm in love with you. Never to break. Leave the vacation. I disappear. Be money I'm making. Give me like two years. I'll be up in the grammy. I'm back to the floor and I know they get damn me. Pain that I put in. Much I take it. No one that and my name won't be mistaken. My floor don't got harder. No, you can't deny me. I'm coming for a head. I'm kidding. Just try me. Yeah, I ain't like enough money for the trophy. If we be an artist, can't nobody help me. Woo. Woo. This is the morning that everyone's day. I ain't a student in this anymore. I ain't the one you should test. I still got so much to prove. Pushing myself till I'm reaching my limit. I got real love for the music. Won't stop till I'm seeing that guy got a rip. I don't respond to the distance you mentioned because you acknowledge that you go to go. I got to wipe this and miss if you like to go play the box versus you. Oh. Whoa, y'all been gone for a minute. I had to evolve to a higher self. I didn't know. Now I'm about to jump in the game as I rise inside. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Oh, I've been on top and ain't nobody stopping me. Oh, let's go. You try your best, but you can't get the drop from me. Oh, I feel like a million might go in the shopping spree. Let's go, let's go. If you ain't talking about how to get money, don't talk to me. Oh, one more time. I've been on top and ain't nobody stopping me. Oh. You try your best, but you can't get the drop of me. Uh, I feel like a million might go on a shop free. And if you ain't talking about how to get money, don't talk to me. Yes, if you ain't talking about how to get money, don't talk to me. Come on, bars. I love it. Great, great job. Let us call our industry guests in. Industry guests, you may now both turn on your cameras. They're going to give you some feedback on your performance. Diana, let's start with you. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Diana. <laughs> That's day take two. <laughs> All right, All right. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No, Diva, hey, congrats, man. I, you know, I think it takes, um, especially over Zoom, but no, I love the vibe, love the flavor. I wanted to ask, you mentioned that this is the song that you came back with after like writer's block, but specifically, you know, in this particular track, like what inspired, what inspired the music? I would say it was, it was just the amount of support that I had around me at the time. So like, at the time that I did start having writer's block, I was starting to feel more alone. Uh, some of my best friends, they had moved out of, they moved out of the state. And, you know, like for a while, I just kind of felt lonely. Like there would be times where I'm just sitting in my room wanting to hit up somebody that I'm like, oh yeah, they're doing their own thing. Um, I go into like, you know, a lot of reflective moments uh while I'm by myself but over time like this last year I've met some really amazing people uh, I've gotten to talk to them uh work with them on their own artistry like just being around them it really helped me help inspire me get back to where I needed to be like it was just fun again you know it's just fun yeah, being yeah. able to create and be with people again nice so Hisham, any feedback? <laughs> All right. Yo, uh, so the kind of stuff you do, obviously, like, I mean, look, when you're in front of a crowd, that's where the energy is really be pumping in. So kudos to you for doing it in a room <laughs> by yourself. Right, so like right. you got it, you got to I'm taking this with that kind of thing into effect here. The only thing I got to say, um, as someone who writes their own lyrical material and then you perform that lyrical material, those are obviously two different worlds, right? So when you're in your own head writing stuff, you, you, you feel it a certain way. Performing it is another kind of component. The only thing that I say this because it's funny because the way the audio came in, it, like in some ways, your vocals only like were more dominant. And I think that worked to an advantage to assess what I'm about to say here. I felt like the from a lyrical standpoint, I was like, ooh, clever. Ooh, nice. Ah, clever. But like I needed to hear it more like coming through you, like from like the gut. I mean, mm -hmm. again, I'm not a singer, so I can't tell you exact I, vocal lessons, whatnot. But like I felt like if you just strip the acapella, pretend like this whole thing started from the beginning, listen to yourself acapella and be like, do I believe me? Is that how I felt when I wrote, when I wrote that, you know, like yeah. whether it's just like studying your lyrics more so from an emotional standpoint, you just sit with the lyrics on a pen and paper and be like that. I wrote that, you know, and like, that means something to me and this point in time in life. And like, 
feel like that emotional burst and just let it I don't about to swear there like let it like rip dude and like if you're pretend you're in front of a crowd and like feeling their sweat you know what I mean like like right. put yourself in that mental space when you perform so if you did record an acapella you can you could literally hear like the passion oozing out of you as opposed yeah. to memorizing off top I mean there's clearly a difference there and that comes through practice dude that just comes through experience and practice so just if anything that I would I recommend to you practice doing acapellas more and be like do I believe me send it show it to your friend do you believe me you know and take mm-hmm. that feedback literally yeah i love that that's great feedback okay so so devo now is your uh, your chance you get to ask ask a question to our industry experts uh i would say my question is for an independent artist what do you recommend how do you recommend going about growing a fan base not just people following you on Instagram, like, you know, easily people could do like follow for follow, but right. how do you really grow a connection with other people? and A real fan base. You know, yeah, like love what you do, support ex- uh, everything that you do, not just... The, the super fan. How do we get the super fan? Yeah, this is kind of my domain. This is what I spend most of my time doing. Uh, it's a general question, so I will give you a general answer here. I think the big things to remember, consistency. Uh, do not worry about it being like perfect. I mean, dude, this is all you need. I, I promise you, like your phone, people are going to consume it on a phone. Don't worry about it being perfect. Uh, number two... It's, Accentuate your positives, hide your, hide your weaknesses. Just your, let your personality come through. If you're, do you in as many ways as possible. If you're in the game, showcase your gaming. If you're into sneakers, showcase your sneakers. If you're, in, yeah. if you're into yeah. organic cooking, showcase organic cooking. But like find ways to do it in a way that lets someone maybe be attracted to you from your music, but then bond to you because they find more in common with you. And yeah. effectively, the music is a means to connect with you. Nice. Uh, again, general answers. Uh, but the, of, of all of them, the big ones to remember is consistency just yeah. have a consistent schedule top of mind whether it's three days a week whatever it is stick to it love it amazing advice diana yeah i think from you know from my from my point of view definitely want to spot like consistency um commitment to you know just your craft and i think uh, you know, just to echo again, um, highlighting what makes you different and what's your specialty really will, I think, garner that attention. I think in addition to that, I'm not sure where you're located in the world or in the country, but I think definitely, you know, um, going to those open mic mic nights, um, going to those like, you know, with other artists and with other producers, like the things that I hear out here in LA, um, just like artists and artists and producers, like, coming together and game planning and then, you know, going to events and such and slowly little by little. Um, Also like, you know, especially in terms of um, young, young audiences, obviously being able to utilize, I think for us, we talk a lot about like, you know, go where the fan is. Right. So like TikTok and doing what you do, like showcasing Mm -hmm. like the sneaker, sneaker, love the cooking, loving plants. And then I think, you know, trying to see if you can do um, showcases like high schools, middle schools, colleges. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. thinking about that, I think that would be, I think it will be money. Yeah. Love it. One thing I say all the time is you want, you want people to like you. Liking your music is great. Is that, that's great. But if you could get them to like you and buy into you, the person and your music, then you have a super fan. All right. Thank you guys so much for this, like, this amazing feedback. Thank you, Devo, for that phenomenal performance. We have to move on because we have four other, four other artists. So I'm going to ask you, oh, actually, before you guys all leave, if you're in the audience and you came to see Devo, head over to at Music Forward on Instagram. Show him love in our poll if you want him to be our fan favorite. That means he'll get to come back in August. All right. And now all of you may now turn off your cameras. Thank you. All right, bringing up the next artist coming to the virtual stage. We have Nicole and Scotty. Come on in, turn on your cameras. Let me tell you about Nicole and Scotty. Nicole and Scotty are a musical sibling duo based in Southern California, where it never rains. No, I'm stop. <laughs> the, dy- <laughs> the dynamic pair are recording performing artists 
songwriters, musicians, audio engineers, and producers. They do it all. Starting a YouTube channel in August of 2013 and making their debut as Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie Presley's supporting act that same year. Together, they have since begun to take the music industry by storm. Their first single, an out and proud trip hop song called Queen, has over 100,000 streams on Spotify. Their follow-up single, Can Be Beautiful, has been featured on Billboard Sound and AXS. Nicole and Scotty, welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. It's great to be here tonight. And thank you for that awesome intro, Lydia. We yeah, really appreciate it, was, it. it was your bio. I just read it. Okay. You guys are <laughs> you guys are so dope. I love, I have siblings, so I love like the sibling dynamic. Um, and I loved, I loved, I loved hearing you guys yesterday. So I know the audience is in for a treat. Tell them about the song you're going to be doing. Appreciate it. So the song we have for you guys tonight is called Dumb on the Internet. We felt it would be appropriate because we wrote the song in 2020 at the height of the pandemic. And it is quite literally about surviving that by hanging out with your best friends on the Internet. And Love it. Come together. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can relate to that. So I cannot <laughs> wait to get into this. You guys, without further ado, Nicole and Scotty. Quarantine's got me feeling alone Everybody's pacing and stuck at home Getting tired of living in a horror movie Can we press a button and get back to grooving? People in their tweets are whining about control while their people dying broke all these crazies are out here panic buying i think it's best that i stay inside with my puppy vibing and now is the perfect time to stay online hanging out with my best friends because we're all trying to keep our cool when the news is the world back online with my best friends being dumb on the internet a touring musician likes to roam was supposed to be touring paris or rome by now never been so flipping angry at my phone and when the apocalypse canceled all our shows the uneducated are starting fights with my mother who's been a nurse for 30 years like they somehow know better look if even coachella is postponed then something's wrong okay and now is the perfect time to stay online hanging out with my best friends because we're all trying to keep our cool when the news has a world back
Oh, I love that. That chant. Oh, I was in here harmonizing like I was in a crowd. <laughs> but when you were like, hey, everybody, I was singing. I love oh the energy. Wish, wish, wish we could hear. I know, I know. Best. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Let's get back to real crowds. All right, let's get our um, industry experts in. Come on in, industry guests. You may both now turn on your cameras. Um, Diana, we will start with you each time, ladies first. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, uh, definitely great job. Uh, super clever. Uh, being dumb on the internet, just so you know, for the work that I do, you know, hooks, chorus that are just memorable yeah. and an earworm is like super important. So I think you, you all definitely um, have something with that. Uh, I could definitely hear something, you know, a vibe like this on a quirky, like youthful uh, teen show or comedy yeah. show. So just automatically, that's where I went to. Um, we happen to work with the artist Rex Orange County. I'm not sure if you you guys know um, his vibe, but like I was like, oh, yeah, I, I could I could definitely see that. So my question for you um, is is the following, like, who is your inspiration and um, what has and which artist has really impacted or influenced your sound? Oh, my gosh. It's so hard to narrow it down every time we're asked this question. Um, <laughs> but I grew up with Taylor Swift, love my life. So she's always been a huge influence on me. Um, Scotty started playing guitar because of John Mayer and Stevie Ray Vaughan and ah. uh, learned B.B. King licks when he was starting out with the blues. So it, it, we kind of pull from like an eclectic mix. Our mom used to live on the islands of Hawaii. So we grew up with like reggae and island music as well. So it's all just kind of like an amalgamation of several different vibes. Amalgamation. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> words baby let's go yeah I love that great great answer I can totally hear it in you guys vibes all right Hisham all right I gotta power through this one because we have so many others to go to but my marketing brain is tangling right now when I see this check it out I totally see you since this song was so timely then uh, I totally see you guys as like a TikTok slash Instagram reel, maybe YouTube shorts kind of act where maybe like every week on a Friday, you recap what the hell happened in the world using mm. that same kind of style, right? So like yeah. you, guys always, you guys always write a funny song. That's like, I mean, today's a time of the day, for instance, like writing a song about yeah. that, for instance, or any kind of right. issue, right? And you are just True. firing consistent, cons shareable, shareable, shareable stuff. Of course, within certain intervals, you have original content, an original song, an original EP, an original album. For the most part, you're mm. building an audience because you're entertaining as hell, recapping the week, almost like a, a, a news comedy kind of, you know, weekend show you would see. Uh, but from a song perspective, and then collabs, bring in other people to sing with okay. you guys, expand the audience. I can see you guys on like a Colbert or something like that. Like Come on. at, at wow. some point, if, if you keep like, if you're stupid, consistent, With just that. like making like funny, fun, quirky, shareable songs, recapping stuff like this, the way you guys do. It. And also you don't need to make it nearly as long as you did. You can make them a minute long, dude, like yeah, one yeah. verse, one course, and you're out. Like just if, I mean, we can even talk offline. We talk about the kind of that, this yeah. kind of concept, but like, sure. that's it. Like to me, like I see that's it. it right there. You guys, Thank this you so is what brother, this is what, but open mic Fridays is about baby because that was gold just now and I totally see it working with the consistency it's perfect okay Thank you. so you guys have a question it's your yes. turn to ask it Thank you very much. Uh, thank you both, by the way, so much for the feedback. It really means a lot, especially uh, we would love to get more relevant on TikTok. So that's a really solid idea. That was a gem. And uh, in sync as well. So thank you very much. Our question is less of a question and more of a request for insight. We are self-sufficient and we basically do everything from our home studio. We would love to know... Um, any tips or tricks you have for getting in front of labels or publishers or music licensors, uh, just anybody where we can expand our uh, reach. You are here. You are here, ma'am. No. I'll, I'll <laughs> let yeah. Diana take yes. this one. Diana, yeah. please. I mean, I think you're an authority on this, please. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to echo some of the responses that I, I said earlier to Devo. I think one, um, definitely um, getting out to different showcases and making, mm -hmm. you know, making the rounds. I think definitely doing what um, 
And she was saying uh, on TikTok, I'll tell you that in our label meetings every Wednesday, we go through, okay, what are the top TikTok trends? Who's popping? Um, so I think, you know, obviously the reach with with TikTok and IG, I think that's that's money. Um, as for um, music licensing, I think you really want to leverage where you're at right now uh, and making sure that you have, I think first and foremost, solid on um, what you're about, how you how you want to package yourself. Um, and then I think, you know, um, investigating those uh, scene companies and more than happy to like offline and offer some suggestions, but really starting out from a place where you retain ownership, you have a company that believes in you and let them be your representatives for the film, TV and ad world. Mm. Thank you so much. Gems on gems. This is so great. This is why I love you, this so much. You want my advice? You want my advice? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Just keep crushing, build your own community, build your own audience. Let and they're going to come to you. Let they're, them come to you and the brother. ball will be yeah. in your yeah. court. Don't yeah. worry about that crap, dude. Yeah. Just focus on making bomb content and building an audience. Seriously. And you're obviously on the right track because you're in front of uh, you're in front of a music sync licensed professional right now. So you're doing exactly what you just asked about. Yeah. All right, you guys, your turn. If you came to see this lovely Lovely, lovely duo, Nicole and Scotty. Head over to at Music Forward on Instagram. Show them love in our poll. Make them our fan favorite. All right, you beautiful people. I will be seeing your faces in a moment. You all may now turn off your cameras. All right, guys, we are rolling. Coming to the virtual world stage. Holland is. Come on in. Holland is is a recording artist and rec and record producer from Compton, California. That is culturally reinventing the sound of contemporary hip hop. Ooh, that's saying something, you guys. Effortlessly gaining traction with his energy fuel delivery and clever bars, he has been co-signed by some of the most notable hip hop blogs, including Zane Lowe, Double XL, Lyrical Lemonade, and No Jumper. Helping guide the next wave of LA sound, Holland is sets himself apart with cadence-driven bars and animated beats that highlight his sonic personality, a style that is hard to imitate and impossible to replicate. Welcome! Ooh. What's the deal? <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. Super excited to have you. Um, tell the audience what they can expect from your performance tonight. Uh, from my performance tonight, I'll be performing my brand new single, Blind to the BS. I wrote this song. It was just a lot of negativity coming at me in my, at that time of, of my life. And I just wanted to channel all that energy in a positive way by creating this song. Nice. Love it. We all need to be blind to, the, blind to it. Blind to that. <laughs> all right. All right. Without further ado, take it away. Holland is, ladies and gentlemen... Let's get it. One second. Everybody feeling good in the chat? Hey, I appreciate everybody tapping in. All my people in the chat, I see y'all. Drop them. Drop the uh, sunglasses emoji right now. We finna turn this up. Let's get it. Block to the... Sound block to the... Block. It's all right. 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 It's all right.
right jump. It's your right jump. It's your right. 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 It's your right doing let it catch on like, you're clearly shot, yeah. really good at that kind of stuff like again beyond the rap stuff like you i can tell you got more there's more going on up there uh to yeah. kind of mirror uh diana's thing uh yeah
Uh, I mean, you mentioned without a major, I mean, I feel like we got, there's gotta be a movement of just like, you don't need any label support dude to get going. Let me, let me just, let me just say this, like as a, as a definitive statement, like any kind of external support, whether it's someone joining your team slash taking a cut of what you do, uh, any kind of people who you're going to outsource work to like that, they're only going to show up if you've got one or two of, of these things, attention or money like yeah. coming your way. They're going to want a piece of that. So until yes. you've got some good attention and or some money coming through, they're, they're, they ain't, they ain't going to come through. And at that point, it's a joint venture and the ball's in your court. So dude, just forget the label thing. I'm telling you, like focus yeah. on you, build an audience and let them just dig you. And I, that ain't going to be hard for someone like you. Straight <laughs> up. Right. I agree. Uh, up. I agree wholeheartedly. Diana? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? And I was going to say, I'm not even offended by that comment. <laughs> <laughs> For a major, but you know what? No, on the real, I worked for non majors for a very long time, working with independent artists, um, either via like music publishing or sync. And I couldn't agree more. I think the name of the game is leverage. And I think now more than ever, with like the power of like, you know, I myself am not on TikTok, but like I think the power of like TikTok and the media yes. and Twitch, for example, and just getting out there. You exactly that. You want to create the leverage, you want to create the, um, the following and the content. So you're going to have the best deal possible when the opportunity comes. I mean, like yes. I think about, maybe I'm a little outdated in my reference, but like Chance the Rapper, right? I don't know what his situation is now, but like when he blew up, he only had a distribution deal, uh, I think with Warner. And so it's like, you know, I think you're on the right path. Yeah, for sure. I if agree. If I can add one more thing on the performance side, since since rapping is your most forward kind of, you know, presentation here. Uh, and again, we're goofing because the mic thing, but like, so I, I love hip hop. I love going to hip hop shows. The one thing I see too common is that like, sometimes the MCs up there will be so stoked that like the performance gets just sloppy. Not to say yours mm -hmm. was, but right. like, right. It's, it, right. it's too, it's like, dude, like the craft the craft. Yes. I need yes. to hear every word. I yeah. want to hear the timing. I want to hear the pitch. Don't yes. overlook that part, dude. Like, cause you, yeah, and you got I'm, all the other stuff like next. <laughs> no, and I love that you didn't rap over your voice. Like you have a show set because this is what artists, they get on stage and I'm like, dude, if I wanted to hear the song, I could just press play on your SoundCloud. You know Straight what I mean? Up. I want to hear, I want to hear you perform and you performed and I love how you made your voice all soft and then high, all that stuff. Just lean into that. Cause that's what's to separate you from all these other rappers who was getting on stage mouthing their lyrics right. okay yep all right you guys if you are in the audience to see holland is it is your chance to show love head over to music forward show so much love in the poll and if you don't he gonna hit your rate charles <laughs> so Yo. Okay. Make that, make, that a sh make that a shirt, dude. <laughs> right. Seriously, we'll do. Head on over. Thank you guys so much. All of you may now turn off your cameras. All right, you guys. I don't know if you could tell I'm having way too much fun hosting. This is like the funnest gig in the world. We have two more phenomenal artists coming to the virtual stage. Aliana, come on in. Oh, I said that wrong. Alina. Alina. Come on in. Let me tell you about Alina. Singing background vocals, Alina has performed with Stevie Wonder. I can just stop there, but there's more to the bio. Stevie Wonder at the Greek Theater and for a project with Kamasi Washington and West Coast Gets and West Coast Get Down. She's also sung alongside Sheila E. and One Republic. Listen, the background vocalist be, the, be really the vocalist, so that means she could sing, sing. As a solo artist, she has performed her own sets in L.A. at iconic venues, the Wiltern Hotel Cafe and the Mint L.A., and has busked on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That means she's a real hustler. During the start of 2020 and quarantines, Alina opened a live stream show for Azomalti. She has held a residency at Haven City Market in the Island Empire, performing original music and rearranging covers with her band. She has shared stages with R&B artists Major, Brandon Coleman, and Anthony Alexander from The Voice. Alina, welcome. Hi. <laughs> so happy to be here and so happy to be back with Music Forward family. It's been a little while. I miss you guys. <laughs> We are excited to have you back and excited to hear your amazing performance tonight. Tell the audience what they can expect. Thank you. So, yeah, this song is called Secret Place, and this is actually um, the second original song I've ever written. Nice. And um, 
I think from what I remembered, I actually wrote this song too around um, uh, the time COVID, like I think while we were all in quarantine. And so, yeah, it's called Secret Place. And it's just about, you know, finding your your space, you know, where where you can really reflect and relax and take a pause, you know, like really think things through. And so, yeah, this is Secret Place. Nice. All right. Well, we're excited. Me Without too. further ado... Alina, take it away. tell y'all about the background vocals y'all the background vocalists sing down oh i was just i was over here just laughing because the runs were ridiculous thank you you better you better sing and write it's giving yes. it's giving very much stevie it's giving it really is like i can i the influence i can see it's there you're incredible thank you okay now that i'm done standing let's get our industry experts <laughs> in you guys may now turn on your cameras Diana, let's start with you. Yes. I mean, yes to all of that. Uh, 
such a warm vocals, just such a warm presence, just FYI. Mm-hmm. Um, like, where is my, where can I buy a ticket? Like, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I was just at an event last night and, um, and saw some KCRW uh, DJs and I was just like, okay, we need to get this girl's music on there. Um, just really beautiful. And my question to you, and just, again, you seem so comfortable, such, um, for me at least, uh, such great um, cadence and uh, expression. My question to you, and I want to make sure, this is the second original song that you create? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that is crazy. So let me ask you this, like, um, what's next? Like, how, how, how are you building your, like, lyrical muscle? Yeah, um, well, songwriting has definitely been a, a goal of mine for a long time. And so, I mean, at first when I started out, it was all about gigging and just making sure I had shows, even just covers and rearranging them in my mm. style. And so then I switched over to songwriting and creating my own. And so next step uh, right now is getting ready to release an EP and nice. get the original content out, not just on IG from live performances, but you know, on different streaming platforms and just getting that out there. Cause like you guys said, content, you know, I have yeah. contents of different shows and venues. So I think after ha- adding the legitimacy to my name, then now releasing that content that, you know, people have been waiting for, like the buildup, it's here, it's here. Yeah. Love it. Hisham. Da, 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 da. Okay. You know that was the, that was the did, goal. Yeah. Did that, did it, yes. you did it. And did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if if that if you could take words from that, that's all I really need to say. Okay, a couple things. Uh, <laughs> whatever it is, you got it, dude. I mean, it's all there. You got the Nord Stage Three. You got that bomb ass piano <laughs> sound. Your vocals are on point. I mean, like, like now you just need those like those rocket boosters. So check it out. The number one, I think, thing for you would be collabs, dude. Whether it's mm-hmm. bringing in an MC for a hook, getting a, a tech house remix, a house music remix, what? Get your sound. You are you have the fortunate position where you people say, "Oh, you got to find your own voice. You got to find your voice." You have your own voice. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Like get that voice in as many different other people's audiences as possible to have yeah. enough people perk up. Like, who is that? You know, and then at the very least, just like leveraging your voice. And then from there, just like write songs with people, collabing with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I instantly followed you on Instagram and then I didn't see Spotify. I went to the YouTube. I saw that live performance video. (laughs) So, I mean, I'm transitioning to the marketing side now. Like at this point, you you need your infrastructure, right? You need the, I guess what I would call like the funnel, right? You need to have that Mm -hmm. point. Like I saw you here. Someone might see you at Hotel Cafe. Someone might hear you on another rapper's track, but like I need that flow to be in place now we're gonna go who is this girl okay yeah. instagram yeah. dope spotify follow now mailing list cool i'm locked in more yeah. songs cool you got the ep coming that's the body work it's very good uh and you said you mentioned you did covers already again like keep doing those because that's obviously just another cheat code kind of way to kind of get in front of people <laughs> yeah. exactly labs dude right now yeah. i think if i if, if i was your manager uh <laughs> one the first like this next one to three years collapse 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 that's it just collabs get in yeah. on as many people's tracks as possible but dude like it's it's locked in i might even hit you on a dm for a collab myself like yeah that was sure. do it. yeah <laughs> and you know always remember like like your one performance clip of like four, a four minute song could be freaking 10 reels like it'll help you be consistent like chopping down your longer form content it's a shorter mm-hmm. form for like tiktok and um instagram and you have the, you have the talent on your side so consistency should never be an, ex- an, an excuse like inconsistency because if nothing else you can always just put on the camera do some runs and blow us all away <laughs> yeah okay? Because I had my edges are kind of gone now, thanks to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what is your question for our industry guests? Okay. So my question, it's if for either one of you, um, just from your experience in the music industry, what was like one really important or key piece of advice that you got or that you discovered that really just stuck with you? Like that one piece that's really kind of just been true throughout your time giving yourself you're letting it you're letting yourself do it on your terms all right obviously there's pressure to feed the machine with the content game like i'm saying but like your ability to express and leave a meaningful piece of art behind comes as priority i'd rather have you post once a week once a month with something special right yeah. and and have that shit be shareable as opposed to just more mediocrity you've conditioned me to scroll meanwhile you're miserable because you feel you got to post all the time you know what i mean 
So like get ready to adapt. Make sure you have you set your own emotional and mental boundaries to make sure that what you're doing is still enjoyable and hang on for dear life because it's a moving industry. But man, the longer you go with it, you'll realize that not everyone really is cut out for this. Maybe in your 20s you are, but are you in your 30s? Are you in your 40s? And hopefully you'll start attracting the lifers around you and you just build with them. Yeah, love it. Diana? Yeah, um, I, well, I just got to say, I think, you know, it's from what I said to Alina, I think earlier, it's like knowing who you are and what you represent and what you want to like put out there into the world. Um, just super side note, I'm really into K-pop. And for those of you who are BTS fans, um, I think you might have heard the news that broke the internet like a week ago. And, you know, they're all going to go on their separate ways. And I really liked um, the message from the one of the MCs. And he says, you know, I just need time to kind of be who I am and as a human being so I can come back with art. So I think, you know, realizing like, you know, the kind of art that you're making, um, realizing that it may not always be on trend. I know that I mentioned specifically like TikTok and Instagram, that's not everybody's thing and that is okay. Um, but knowing like what it is that you have, knowing that you're not always mm-hmm. going to be on top, knowing that there's going to be yes. high lows, mm-hmm. um, knowing that you may be the front man and maybe not the front man throughout yeah. this process. And I think, you know, to echo what was said already, it's like, you know, if, if who you are is somebody who, who's a creator and like, this is like the way that you need to live your life, then I think that's the way you're going to do it. Yeah. Um, and knowing that, you know, you have to enjoy the process because if the process is not enjoyable, then it's, it's not worth happen. it. Exactly. Yeah. Like you as a vessel, as a creator and the art you put out, like, you know, it's not, not worth it. But I think, you know, um, discipline, creating your art, knowing that, you know, if you are not part of like the whole TikTok thing, being okay with that. And, you know, if your if your thing is to create art, again, you may be the front man, you may be the writer, you may, the, may be the producer, but if you're talking about longevity, it's about being the Renaissance man. Thank yes. You. Yes. Listen, don't let the highs get to your head and don't let the lows get to your heart. Mm. Remember that. That's very important because it's going to be highs and lows. This industry is all about ebbs and flows. So don't get too cocky because something's working because what worked today, six months from now, may be trash. So don't get too cocky. Remember that it's a flowing and constantly moving. And when, when, when it is that low moment, that doesn't define you because you already know who you are. Yeah. All right? To, yeah. to quote one of my favorite movies, Blow, uh, there was a, a great line. It's like, when you're down, it's never as bad as it seems. And when you're up, you feel... Uh, sorry, when, when you're down, it feels like you can never be up again. And when you're up, it's never as good as it seems. Just life rolls on, dude. Just yeah. keep doing yes. you. Like, don't get too distracted. Because, like, it's good. The, the getting's good now. But, like, that, it may not happen in three months, six months, a year. Just, just as long exactly. as you maintain your boundaries, you keep yes. doing you. Yeah. And it seems like you have a great grip on who you are, which is so important at this stage in your life. So... All right. If you're in the audience and you came to see Ahmad, head over to at Music Forward on Instagram. Show him so much love in our poll if you want Ahmad to be the fan favorite. Ahmad, thank you so much. You may turn off your camera. Industry guest, stick around. I have one last question for you guys. I know we're over you guys. We're 17 minutes over. You're still here. You're a real one. We are wrapping up, honestly. Five more minutes, tops. All right, you guys. This is the part we just ask you one question. If you had to give one word of advice, just one word, not one word itself, but just like one thing to an artist who's just starting out, what would it be? Whoever, whoever wants yeah, to Yeah, you know what? I was just going to say, um, there was a, a video just posted by Stephen McKay, who happens to be like vocal coach to like Jennifer Lopez and a lot of others. Oh, yes. I love Steve Mackey. Dope. Yeah, oh, Steve Mackey. Thank you, Steve Mackey. And I love what he said. And when, that was a very question that was asked. And he says, discipline and consistency and planning. And, you know, I think it was echoed throughout the night. It's like, don't wait for a third party to help you do what you got to mm-hmm. do. Like create create your community, um, feed off each other, inspire each other. And that way, like you're going to grow. You as an artist are going to grow and your community is going to grow. And thus your audience is going to grow. Yes. Love, love, love it. All right, Hisham. I just have like phrases that are just kind of coming, coming to my mind. Okay. Um, Number one, uh, you're not entitled to anything. Mm. Talent is not nearly enough. Man. (laughs) Ooh, uh, I mean, I could even just kind of stop there. Talent is not enough. You're not, it, this is a privilege. Yeah. I think this yeah. is the best time to be a creator. 
Uh, please study your history to really appreciate the fact that you have a music studio built into your computer and you have the world's distribution. Like that's a paradigm shift. Please yeah. just uh, maybe just appreciate that. I mean, not to date myself, but I got my start, you know, maybe in like the 2000, early 2000s, you know, and like MySpace was the thing to yeah. the industry. But like, again, guys, like if you're just starting out now, you have all this stuff. So appreciate yeah. that. Uh, that's it. I mean, really like you're not entitled to anything. Uh, talent is not nearly enough. Yep. Uh, and don't get burned out, by the way. Don't don't feel like you always have to keep making TikTok more profitable for the shareholders or Instagram more profitable for right. the show or Spotify by pumping them with their content. Make sure that you remember that this has to stay at 